Wojtek, I want to understand reality. I'm told that to understand reality, I have to understand quantum theory. And to understand quantum theory, I'm going to come to you. I'm honored. <laughs> so, the reason we need to understand quantum theory before we understand reality is that quantum theory is the only theory which is encompassing everything. It has no limits. No limits that we know of, at least. So, quantum theory was discovered by looking at things which are very small. Electrons, atoms, photons. But as time progressed, we started testing it in systems which are bigger and bigger. And in some sense, the tests were done in the hope that it will break down. And it will break down in a way which, it, which will affirm our classical prejudices. Our normal understanding exists. of the normal understanding. world. And quantum theory is weird. It is weird because it's so egalitarian. In quantum theory, any superposition of states is a legal state. Now, I know Tell it sounds me mysterious. That, Tell me what that means. This means that if this glass can be here and it can be there, yes. it can be also in here and there at the same time. We don't see things which are here and there. We see things which are, real, which are, which are localized, which are in definite places. And something else ought to come in if quantum theory is the only theory. And, and we see that us. no matter how small we look at things in microscopes. Uh, it, it, we never see things in two places. Well, in microscopes, you have evidence of things being in two places, uh -huh. right? So in some sense, for example, electron microscopy works because things are in many places at uh -huh. the same time and then get recombined. Uh -huh. Okay, so microscopy, electron microscopy, is, is, is there because quantum mechanics is there. In fact, you know, if you look at applications of which are, which are uh, having a big market share, <laughs> to use, uh, you know, a, a measure which we can all understand, yeah. a lot of that Lasers. is because of quantum mechanics. Yeah. Transistors, computers run because of quantum mechanics. Transistors run Video discs. Video discs, lasers. If we look at chemistry, it is there because of quantum mechanics. So quantum mechanics is the theory which underlies all of our normal everyday applications we've grown accustomed to. Okay, so let, let's understand the weirdness. The weirdness is the superposition. The weirdness, part of the weirdness, oh. the place where the weirdness starts okay. is a superposition. It gets weirder. It gets weirder. Tell me. The weirder part has to do with the fact that in classical physics, if you have a well-defined state of an object which consists of several pieces, yes. this means that you have a well-defined uh, state of each of the pieces. In quantum mechanics, this is not the case. In quantum mechanics, you can know everything that is to be known about a collection of objects, and yet to be you can be left in a situation where you know nothing about any of the parts. So these are the entangled states. In some sense, they are consequence of superposition, but they are strange enough and characteristic enough consequence of superposition to take and give another name. Okay, and what else is there? I've heard that, that if you can have particles separated by very large distances, and if you know something about one, suddenly you know something about the other. Absolutely. Almost instantaneously, and the information can't tra doesn't go between the two, it's impossible. So this is a consequence of entanglement. Yeah. So entanglement is an intimate knowledge of two particles about each other, and that knowledge is so intimate <laughs> that it precludes any communication with anything else. <laughs> So these two particles know about each other so well that indeed if you ask a question of one of them and it gives you the answer, the other one will give you a correlated answer. No matter how far away. No matter how far away. So the interaction doesn't matter. The state is a shared property. I mean, and that's, and the particles can be so far apart that even light would not have a chance to communicate between and this has been exper this has been confirmed experimentally so people have uh, done very uh, clever and, and and increasingly convincing and increasingly 
sophisticated experiments where they separate these particles by distances which are farther and farther apart. Clearly the communication as limited by the speed of light cannot transfer information from one particle to the other, and yet they are perfectly correlated. So what we're saying is that the, the theory that underlines all reality that describes the micro world in its entirety has these elements in it which seem so totally inconsistent with everything we know about the way the world is. Absolutely. <laughs> are you, are you, are you, I, I'm more mystified now. You, how, how do we make progress in understanding this? Is it possible? It is possible, and I think one of the links we were missing until recently um, had to do with our prejudices of how we understood classical theories. In classical physics, we always thought that a system by itself is something to be understood really in separation from the rest of the universe. Okay. And there are many examples of why it's a good strategy and so on and so forth, and people have gotten used to the fact that you really need to understand the system before you understand its interactions with the, with the rest of the universe. Now, in quantum mechanics, it turns out that because of entanglement, the nature of these interactions, the consequences of these interactions are so subtle that the fact that even very weak interactions exist can change the behavior of the system in a very dramatic way. Oh. So, in fact, the most quantum aspect of quantum mechanics, which is entanglement, can help one understand how quantum mechanics ends up explaining what we see, classical. So, help me understand how superposition, how entanglement can help us understand how the micro world explains the macro world. So, superposition is a problem, right? Superposition is a fact that this glass according to quantum mechanics, can exist here and there at the same time. Yes. Entanglement is so one step up, above superposition. <laughs> it's a combination of, of, of uh, locations of several different uh, objects. The interesting thing is that entanglement, even though it's in many ways the weirdest consequence of quantum mechanics, may be the way to understand classical physics, or how classical physics emerges from quantum mechanics. But well, that's the key question. How classical physics, the physics of the world that we see in our ordinary lives in the universe, we look out, see a planet, star, how one comes from the other. Absolutely. So the key point in, in uh, decoherence, which is what I want to tell you about, is that quantum systems are not isolated. They interact with the environment. When they interact with the environment, they leave records. They leave memory in the environment. So there is a transfer of information. So that, that you're calling decoherence. This I am calling decoherence. Okay. Yeah. The quantum is this wave, this probability of where it where things are, right? And and when that decoheres then that's the, the, the interaction with the environment. That's right. So the interaction with the environment allows the environment to know where an object of interest right. is. And before that, it was a, just a probability of where it may be. It's worse than that. Before that, it was a superposition. Okay. After the interaction happens, it becomes a probability. Oh, okay. okay. So after that, so before the interaction with the environment happened, you had oodles of possibilities, uh. essentially all of them incompatible with what we see in the real world. After that interaction happens, yeah. you end up being offered a menu, but that menu has only on it positions which are classical, uh. quote unquote. Uh. Okay? So, uh, decoherence, because it involves entanglement between the system and the environment, mm -hmm ends up fixing the set of possible things which can happen. It doesn't help tell you which one of them happens, but it tells you the set of possibilities. And the set in models that we can calculate is classical. And that's the probability. 
And then you can say, uh, I assign probability to this set of possibilities. Okay. Right. Okay. So, how then can we go back and, and, and say, well, what, what is really happening in, in, in quantum theory? Is, is, is this just a mathematical formulation that is a, that is a kind of a way to understand some, some reality? Or, or is this really what's happening? Is that a fair question? I think it's probably a fair question. Let me try to answer it, and then you'll, then you'll judge. Okay? So, so, so my take on it is people are doing exceedingly more uh, sophisticated experiments on verifying quantum mechanics. And they get better and better limits on the fact that quantum mechanics is obeyed in larger and larger scales. Now, we know that components which make objects which we deal with are definitely quantum. So the questions that can arise is, does anything strange happen when these objects get bigger, bigger and bigger? Right. Nothing seems to. Everything seems to be still quantum. So if you're in a controlled situation, when the system is isolated, it behaves as if quantum laws were sacrosanct. So I think... The isolation we have of the no environment choice. is the key. It's not the, just the size, absolutely. because the size can get bigger, and the, this quantum weirdness is maintained. So you put your finger on the key thing. If the system gets bigger, it's harder to isolate from the environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if something is as small as an atom or an electron, it, it's easy. well, you can make it separate and, 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 and keep it uh, carefully away from everything else. But if something is as big as, as a glass, or as you or me, that's impossible. Let's drink to quantum mechanics. Let's drink to quantum mechanics. I understand it a little bit better. But let me make credit. one more point. One more point before we drink. Before we drink. Okay. Okay. So there is a very good evidence that you and I leave a very definite imprint in the environment. And that evidence comes simply from the fact that I can get all the information that I get about you looking at you, and you can get all the information looking about, uh, about me, yeah from the photon environment, right? Yeah. So the photons reflect from us, right. and the tiny fraction of the photon environment that we intercept with our eyes yes. allows us to extract a lot of information about each other. Right. So that means that really is this environment which has a memory of what, has hap right, what is right, happening right, here. Right, right, right. Fascinating. Now let's drink to it. Let's drink to it. <laughs>